In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a landscape by modifying a plane. First, you'll want to create a plane. It's the square icon that should be in the upper viewport. And this will create a, a basic flat shape in our scene. So a plane is a one surface object. It has no dimension to it besides the the X and Z axis. Once you have your plane, I'm going to raise mine a little bit above the standard grid in my viewport. The next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to add some width and height segments to the surface of our plane. The standard is just to have one width and one height segment. If I was to raise that number, it'll begin to divide the surface of my plane into multiple parts that I can then manipulate. Right now, you may not be able to see the division of your plane, so if you can't see any lines dividing the surface of your plane, you'll want to navigate to realistic, which is what I have in my viewport. You may see wireframe or bounding box in yours. And I'm going to click on Show Edges. And Showing Edges will show basically the division of your mesh or your surface material. So now you can see that as I continue to add segments to the surface of my plane, it will continue to add these lines across the surface. Once you have enough lines, you will then want to navigate to the Tools tab. And this is where you'll, you'll have the ability to begin to push and pull the surface of, of your plane. So the standard selection is just your object. You have the option to manipulate faces, to manipulate edges, and to manipulate the vertex of your Plane. And this goes for any object that you're working with. So let's say I wanted to manipulate specific points within this plane. I'll go to activate the vertex selection and then I can either click and drag to select points. I can select an individual point or I can select multiple points by by holding down control on the Mac. It may be different to different on a PC. Once you have the points that you want to move, you'll then want to make sure that you have the move tool activated and then you can begin to push and pull those points and that will allow you to manipulate the surface of your object. So once again I'm selecting a a few points here and once I have my points selected I'm going to modify that. The, the more you manipulate your surface, the more drastically you manipulate the surface, the, the larger the effects will appear on your screen. I'm going to show you now how manipulating the edge of a surface will affect the object. So the points activated very specific parts of the plane, these intersections, and we were able to push and pull those surface locations. For the edge of an object, you'll notice that now these um, lines are being highlighted as I select, as I hover over different parts of the plane. So if I push and pull this, instead of pulling from one specific point, it's now pulling from an entire edge to manipulate my surface. And I can continue to manipulate my surface this way. A really nice feature about the edge tool is that instead of just selecting one, I have the option to, depending on the object, select a continuous line in a specific direction. So if I go to the left tools panel, there's an option to select a loop. 
and that activated this entire line. If instead I wanted to select a ring, that'll activate a specific column. So you can think of these as columns and rows in terms of what, what is activated. So if I wanted to have an entire valley, I could select a loop and then lower an entire portion of my landscape. The face tool, similar to the edge tool, just allows for a larger area selection and manipulation of objects. So instead of just modifying one edge, I'm pulling up and down an entire face. I can also select faces and I can extrude specific surfaces so that it sort of creates an addition on top of that landscape. So if I press extrude, you'll notice that I have now created these sort of squares that come up off of the surface and I could pull these up and down. The bevel tool is something else that you can play with in terms of being able to manipulate and smooth out specific aspects of your object. In this case, I'm not really getting much of an effect right now. Once you're done with your landscape, navigate back to the object selection and you may want to smooth out the modifications that you've done. In order to do this, you'll want to navigate down to Mesh Smooth. And when I select that, you'll notice that it has now sort of curved out my objects and really made all of, the, all of those harsher edges um, into a softer landscape. The more subdivisions you add, the more detail that you'll sort of get to preserve within your new landscape. I'm going to leave my subdivisions to one for right now. Another thing that you may want to do for your landscape before you're finished is you may want to see if you can activate the bottom of your plane. In order to do this, I'm going to, underneath properties and the poly mesh tab, scroll all the way down underneath all of these operations that I've done and click on that plane. Actually, I'm going to go down to the properties tab and I'm going to click double sided. This will now make sure that if I was to navigate underneath my plane, that bottom side is also activated. When double sided is not clicked, when I navigate underneath the, my object, I won't actually be able to see through the bottom. It'll just show me a, a cutoff view until I rotate to view above my landscape. So making sure double-sided is selected will then activate the bottom so it appears to also be a surface. And that's how you can create a quick landscape in Clara.